I am so happy, so lucky, so honored to spend this next 30 minutes with you, Brian. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to, to join us on this Professional Beauty Online Week, sharing your wisdom and your insights. You were supposed to be one of our keynote speakers in London, and there you are, stepping up and being live with us today. Thank you so much, Brian. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure, jean -Guy. To give the, the audience um, a little uh, background about you, um, I was so, um, so happy to meet you years and years ago at iSpa, um, because yes. every year you host uh, seminars, uh, you're a keynote speaker. Actually, you are uh, Mr. Dr. Brian Williams, an international speaker and author, focusing on service excellence and leadership effectiveness. You have facilitated workshops and delivered keynotes worldwide, helping organizations create a memorable service experience for their customers. And you definitely have a true passion and talent to educate and to inspire professionals to be consistently exceptional. It comes as no surprise that in 2019, you were the recipient of the ISPA Dedicated Contributor Award. Today, and for the next 30 minutes, we are going to touch on a very important topic, especially with the situation that everyone is facing right now, a time of uncertainty, of fear when we switch on the media. Maybe it's time also for people to understand that we can be human and kind in the same time. Mm. And it's maybe tough for them, and this is the topic of our day, that they can uh, really rise as managers, and shine as leaders. That's it. That's it. And Zhangi, thank you once again. Thank you for organizing this. And um, the amount of work and dedication that you put into your craft is truly inspiring. And the world right now needs more people like you who are organizing and coordinating positivity to be bottled up and, and scaled out and sent out to everyone because every single person, no matter what country you're in, no matter what industry you're in, we're talking about spa, beauty, and wellness right now, but no matter what industry you're in, the world needs more people like you, jean -Guy, to help bring light into the world. And as you know, light is not meant to be put under a, a basket. It's supposed to be up on a hill so you can give light to everyone in the house. So thank you for being a light giver, sir. Thank you, thank you, Brian. As we were preparing this uh, conversation, you want to touch on three important topics, three C's, right. care, communicate, and countdown. Yes. So as we're talking about rising as a manager and shining as a leader, I want to make sure that we understand what we're talking about here. If you look at the word um, lead, out of the word leader, lead by definition has a very clear, has a very clear connotation. Lead means two things. One, it means you're going somewhere and, and this is very important, there's at least someone following you. You cannot say you're leading if there's not someone following. If, no, if, you, if you think you're leading, but no one's following, then you're just taking a walk, right? So someone has to be following you in order for you to say the word lead. And the operative question in leading is, why on earth would anyone in their right mind want to follow you anywhere? You see, that's what So, so as, as we talk about shining as a leader, we're keeping that in mind, right? Because light is supposed to touch and affect everything around it. It was about shining, right? If I'm on your team, jean -Guy, something about my life should be better. As a result, of being on your team. My, my life should not be the same. Forget the job. I'm not, I'm not talking about a job right now. I'm saying my life as a human being on planet Earth should somehow be better. I should think about myself on a higher plane. I should be thinking about my esteem should be stronger. My competence should be stronger. My confidence should be stronger. My desire to serve should be stronger. It's, everything should be stronger because I'm on your team. So that's number one, shining as a, as, as a leader. When we talk about rising as a manager. Now managing, some people think is a dirty word. It's not. Some may think that you start off as a manager and if you pray, do yoga, eat berries every day, you too can one day elevate and become a leader. Not true. Managing is just as important. In fact, the word manage by definition means you're orchestrating things to get something done. 
you're getting a lot of resources. You're getting resources together and you are manipulating it and you're conspiring those resources to get something done. Doing this webinar right now is a management process. Setting up a meeting is a management process. The World Beauty and Wellness Conference is a management process. So managers are needed. Now, in this particular uh, webinar, we're talking about three things, three C's really. Care, communicate, countdown. Here's what I want you to do. These are the three, three things, you're not gonna miss it. Care, communicate, countdown. Let's start with the first C. The first C is caring. I don't care how many books you've read, how many podcasts you've listened to, how many of Jean Guy's seminars you may have attended. I can promise you, no one can teach you how to care. No one can teach you how to care. Right now, right now as a leader, your number one objective is to make sure that everyone on your team knows for a fact that you care about them. Whether they're currently employed, or part-time, or they're on call, or they've been furloughed or laid off for the time being, you have to make sure that every single person you've been privileged to lead knows you care about them. That comes through your words, your empathy, sympathy even. This comes through your vulnerability, sharing what your struggles are, sharing your uncertainties, right? And that kind of thing, when you're a leader and you're able to share your vulnerabilities, share your own uncertainties, share your own struggles, that opens a door for everyone else on your team to do that as well. But there's nothing that is more potent than, than if it's not in person, right? No, not in person. There's nothing more potent than saying to your team, I care about you. I genuinely care about you. What can I do for you? Is there anything I can help you with? Is there any resource I can provide? Do you, do you just want to talk? Just to talk? Because some people in their own homes may not feel comfortable talking with their significant other for whatever reason. So you can be that bridge, that person who is like, you know what, if you need somebody to talk to at the very, I may not have a job for you right now. I may not be able to pay you right now, but if nothing else, I need you to know I care about you. That's number one. Number one, as a leader, if you're shining, you're talking about you're caring for those people who you're leading and those you're working on alongside. It's very powerful. Um, some people can be um, at ease with that, but with, when they don't know what to say, what the future holds, when they have so many uncertainties, they fear that if they open up a conversation and if they open up their vulnerability and there are too many questions being fired their way, how do I pay my bills? How do I care for my family? When can I be um, uh, engaged? What, when, what can I can I be on payroll again? Uh, are you just paying me, um, you know, hourly? Or uh, how how do I compensate for the tips? And it can go on and on, and the drama goes on. And if, in the end, the manager or the leader says, "I don't know how to answer all these questions. I I don't know," they may fear they will lose face. And by being too empathetic, they will be too vulnerable. Excellent point. Excellent point. I think personally, Yangi, I think number one, first and foremost, honesty is so important. I believe that to so your team, they're not, you know, they're not, they're not foolish. They, they, can, they can read the news for themselves, right? So it's not like they're living in a vacuum. They know what's going on in the world. They can see it. They can hear what's going on in the world. They can see all these other businesses around them that potentially are closing or hitting pause for the, for the time being. And when you're a leader and you don't express, you don't share, you don't talk about it, then it leaves it up to them to now start creating their own narrative. Your team starts creating their own narrative, which creates an additional level of cynicism and even uh, worse morale in a time that we don't need worse morale. So I, I think that ultimately people latch on to genuine caring. That's what I'm saying naturally they latch on to that no matter what the circumstances may be gosh we may not have any food right now i may not we may not know how we're going to pay our bills we may not know we're going to have a job we may not know we're going to reopen but at the very least you need to know i care about you that's the type of intangible quality that that separates uh world-class leaders from the rest from the, from the other leaders 
Agreed. You, you did touch on something before we, we um, as we were preparing for this session, you said it is pos possibly the first time in our lifetime that billions of people are in the same boat at the same time. Yes. Same boat, same time. Can you imagine? I mean, ev pretty much every country on earth, pretty much every country on earth, we're feeling the same thing at the same time. And it, 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 for me, what it does, man, John Gee, it rises the level of consciousness that we're connected as human beings. There's a, there's a, there's a unifying force of humanity that may have been um, underappreciated and taken for granted in the past. But now you cannot take for granted because you can turn on the computer, you can put on the television set, and you can see that your brothers and sisters in France in Italy, your brothers and sisters in, in, in Asia, East Asia, in South America, in the Caribbean, we're all feeling the same thing. So there's this, this, there's this global tsunami of empathy happening. And when that happens, hopefully, and we've, and we've already started seeing this, but hopefully it elevates people's compassion towards each other. Like, what can I do for you? What, get, what, what, what is it that I've been blessed with that I can share with you? Like right now, the best gift that I have that I can share with other people is doing things like this. What we do right now is things that I generally get paid for, right? We get yes. paid to do webinars. We get paid to do keynotes at conferences and workshops. That's not happening now, however, but we're not worried about that. It requires also for me, I, I'm, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a five letter word begins with F and the word is faith, right? Um, from personally, I'm deeply rooted in faith. I'm deeply rooted in my spirituality, right? And I would have been completely a nervous breakdown, mental breakdown, everything breakdown if it, if it was not for faith. I know, I know in my heart, I know that things will not only resume, but it'll get better. So you mentioned, we talked about this early before the recording, jean Gay, but I'm from the Caribbean specifically from St. Thomas in the United States, Virgin Islands, um, 13 miles long, 32.5 square miles, and you can drive from one end to the next in 30 minutes. The thing about the Caribbean islands is that we have what's called the Atlantic hurricane season. So right, every, right, right around between July and, July and October, every single year, you have hurricanes coming off of the eastern, the western, coast of Africa, the Cape Verde Islands, and they make their commute along the Atlantic Ocean, picking up steam, and they inevitably barrel into the <laughs> Caribbean islands. So I grew up in that atmosphere, knowing for a fact that there will be hurricanes coming. Fortunately, you don't know, your specific island will not get a direct hit. Oftentimes, the hurricanes kind of pass by. So you may get wind and rain, but nothing catastrophic. But every now and then, you will get a boom full-on head collision with a hurricane. And I don't care how strong you think your house is, it's going to be destroyed. It's going to be built of bricks and cement, it's going to be destroyed. But growing up on, on, on St. Thomas taught me a couple of things. I, I actually lived through two major hurricanes where our home was 100% was destroyed. 100%. Like, we had everything we had, refrigerator, clothes, photographs, books, everything we ever had was gone the next morning. I lived through that twice. Now, here's what's so fascinating about um, storms, catastrophic storms, and it's two things. Number one is, it always seemed like the very next day, the sun shined extra bright. Like, it was extra hot the next day. The sun is like, the hurricanes, the hurricanes that come and they completely block out the sun, right? Because it's a major force and cloud, so you just know it's dark. Everything, even if it could be two o'clock in the afternoon and it's pitch black outside because everything's covered up. But the next morning, it's like the sun was, it couldn't wait to burst through and just shine. That's number one. And number two, everything got rebuilt stronger. It got destroyed, it got rebuilt stronger. The houses got rebuilt stronger. Companies got rebuilt stronger. Buildings got rebuilt stronger. So what I'm prophesying right now on this call with you, Zhangi, we're going to have things being rebuilt stronger than they ever have been before. Thank you, Brian. You did mention care. You mentioned catastrophic hurricanes commuting. You did mention 
a raise of consciousness of compassion. That's a lot of C's, maybe leading us to the next C you wanted to touch on, which is communication. You're brilliant. Now you, you should do this for a living. You're really good at this. <laughs> maybe I should. <laughs> communication. <clears throat> now, these are things you and I know. Everyone, everyone watching this webinar right now, you know, as a leader, you must communicate. You even know as a leader, you must care. So this is not rocket science. But there's a proverb, there's an old proverb that says, um, to know and not do is to not know. Okay? To know and not do is to not know. So you can know something, but if you're not doing it consistently, then you don't really know it. Because the big difference between knowing something and doing it, and there's an even bigger difference between doing it and consistently doing it. What I'm talking about here for my second C is consistent communication. It ties into caring, because you have to care, you have to communicate. But I'm saying share whatever information you know. You're working in a company, you're in a part, you're in a spa, you're in a salon, you're in a business, and you literally, I mean, it seems like every day something's changing. We literally don't know what's happening from day to day or week to week. Share what you know. In fact, I implore you to share what you don't know. Say, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Here's what I believe, but I don't know. Send text messages, send emails, do phone calls. One of my, one of my um, business partners, one of my companies that I work with very, very closely, it's a company called Talent Plus. And they're based in Lincoln, Nebraska, here in the United States. They're a phenomenal company. And here's what they do. Every morning in their corporate office, they do something called daily formation. Daily formation. It's their version of a team huddle. And they have like maybe 50 or 60 people, at least, who work in their corporate office. Well, now they're, actually, you know, they're not working in the corporate office. They're all working remotely out of their homes. They still do daily formation at 8.45 a.m. Central Standard Time. They use things like Zoom, they, they, they talk, they see each other. And on their formation, they talk about who's celebrating a birthday today, who's celebrating a work anniversary today, uh, what's some updates. Let's talk about what's something that each person is grateful for today. Let's talk about something that's coming up that we don't, something, some, some share some piece of information about the business. I mean, and the formation takes maybe 10 minutes. But it's the most powerful thing. This is not the time to step away from processes like that. This is the time to do more communication. You see? So care first, then communicate. Because it is about another C, about connection. That's it. That's it. That's it. If I care about you and I communicate that I care about you, we're automatically connected. Automatically connected. Because interestingly enough, I've seen situations, um, professional and personal relationships, where one person may care for another person, and they choose to withhold that. They don't want to share how much they, they care about the other individual, or how much they care about the team, because they want to put on a rough exterior. I think it's a huge mistake. Because in this economy, in this world, I think purely as human beings, anyway, we're not called to be mediocre. We're not called to do the bare minimum. We're called to thrive. In fact, to use your word, John Gee, we're called to shine. And you don't shine when you don't feel like who you're working with doesn't care about you. If I'm working with you, John Gee, you are my leader, I will work harder, guaranteed. I will shine brighter, guaranteed, if I know you care about me. Literally, you are some, I, I can be self-motivated, I can have all that, that's wonderful, I can be ambitious and driven, but there's something about the word caring mixed with communication that establishes a connection that is not easily broken. Agreed. This can be our finest hour, this can be our finest moment in yes. beyond titles, beyond uh, places where we work, we live, we're on the same planet, we're on the same boat at the same time. And this is how we can truly connect as human beings and uh, not just human doings, which was what we were doing so far, being busy, 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 busy bees, even the yeah. busyness of business. But mm. it's, it's now the moment, as you said, 
we have no choice. We have to sit down, we have to think it through, and we have to connect with each other because it's together that we rise. And actually, we rise as lifting others. So as leader, it is our duty to lift others. That's it. That's it. Yeah, you, you got it perfectly, jean -Guy. Before we get into our, to our third one, our, 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 our third um, word, which is countdown, I want to just go back real quick. Make sure, and it kind of ties into the communication and caring as well. It's, it's very critical that no one is, uh, is passive right now in terms of no one should be waiting on someone else to move first. We should all take the initiative uh, to move first, meaning to give first, to offer help first, to thank someone first, to recognize first, to encourage first, even more than that, open doors, you know, do things first, give recognition, do all that first. In fact, John Gia will say that as a leader, if I was a human being overall, but particularly as a leader, I have no right, I have no right to expect anything from anyone whom I haven't given something to first. I didn't work for the sun, I mean, I, I, I didn't work for the air that I breathe, you know what I'm saying? The sun is not there because I put it there. My heart is not beating because of anything I did. They're all gifts. They are gifts given to me in the same way I received these gifts, like air, like sun, like my heart beating. That's the same way I'm supposed to freely give my gifts to you. So I'm gonna look for ways to add value first before I ask for anything. That's what we need more so right now, people who are saying me first. Not in a selfish way, but me first. I'm gonna do it first. I'm not gonna wait for you first. I'm gonna do it first. I'm gonna text you. I'm gonna reach out and say, how are you doing first, right? I'm not gonna wait for you to do it first. It is. It is a, a different mindset. Uh, it's interesting before we move to the countdown, because the countdown is going to lead us to a certain point. At that point is probably when business will reopen, when social distancing is lifting. Will people, as the world has pressed pause and really hard, will they press play? Will they press just start and continue as it was before in a new normal? Or will they press reset? and have another set of values and go by that. Yeah, you know, I think you and I both are hoping everyone presses reset. Because this is the ultimate time to dust everything, rethink everything. And even in some cases, some people guys, you may get a chance to start over with, with a new team, which many people have been wanting to do for years, but they couldn't really do that, right? But as opportunity for some people, this could be a blessing. So. Um, I, I think resetting is key, but I think a, a huge, a, a wasted opportunity is going to be to just press play. Just, let's just continue doing what we've already been doing. I think it's a shame on every business, including your business and my business, Yangi. It's a shame on us. It's a shame on anybody who has a business, who is managing a business even. It's a shame if you continue doing things the way you've always been doing when this great pause in mankind has, has ceased. Yes, indeed. Yes. Yeah. So the, the final, I'm sorry? Countdown. Countdown, that's right, countdown, countdown, countdown. So a big part of my, a, a big part of my job is, you know, when, when luxury hotels or restaurants or luxury spas are opening for the first time, or sometimes reopening, um, they would hire somebody like me to come in and do a big, a, a big uh, keynote, a big pep rally almost, but it's really inspiration mixed with motivation, mixed with a lot of education and tangible takeaways. I kind of wrap up everything they've been learning about on a technical level for how to do their jobs, whether it's they're doing facials or they're doing checking in of the guests or they're cleaning the, the room, whatever it is, I kind of come in and I put a, a huge overarching blanket of this is what we're ultimately doing. It's about world-class service to our guests, to each other, to who we report to, and so on. So I, and they typically, the companies I work with usually do a, a deliberate countdown process where they may say, we're going to do a 30-day countdown or a 14-day countdown, some companies do a 12-day countdown. But in this countdown, man, on a daily basis, they have some aspect that they're going to be focusing on with the entire team. They're training on something. In fact, I think 
a, a major chunk of your countdown should be on your core values, your vision, your mission, the things that make your company, your business, your team stand apart. But I, I, I strongly encourage you to do a countdown. Everyone should be bursting, meaning your team, should be bursting at the seams. They cannot wait for that countdown to hit one. Like one more day left and then, then it hits zero. Oh my gosh, you should have, your team should be falling over each other, tripping over each other to open the door for the guests. Your team should be going out of their way to outdo each other in how much they wow their guests. And not just, not just wowing their guests, but wowing each other. During the, during the countdown process before you reopen, as a leader, you should be doing everything you can to treat each team member exactly how you want them to treat your guests. If you want your team members to, 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 to answer the phone within two rings and with a smile and say, good afternoon, thank you for calling Jean Guy's World Class Spa. This is Brian speaking, how may I assist you? Then when they call you on the phone, you cannot answer the phone like, yeah, what's going on? You have to answer the phone the same way. I mean, literally, wow your team. Um, anticipate their needs, go above and beyond, create memorable experiences for your team during the countdown. So when you reopen, they can't wait to do those same things for their guests. Thank you so, so very much. The, the countdown is also very real for us because we're getting very near to the end of this session. I, I would love to have more time, but this is what we have and you've given us so much already to think upon, to ponder upon. Um, maybe a little recap, and if you wish, I know you are so good with words, um, with the air that, that you breathe and, and how they come out with, with words that lift us higher. Would you like to say something about lift me higher also? And then I'll conclude and, and lead um, the people joining us today also to your website, bwenterprise.net, so that they can uh, find more resources about what you've written, the many books, the posters, the inspirational videos, the training materials that you've done, but maybe a little wrap up and lift us higher, Brian. Absolutely, absolutely. So the three things, as we, as we rise as managers and shine as leaders, Jean-Guy, the key, the three keys I want you to take away, the three, the, the three pieces I want you to hold on to and don't let them go. Number one, care for your team, care for them, which begins obviously by caring for yourself. You cannot give what you don't have. You can't care for me if your caring bucket is depleted yourself. Make sure you care for yourself. Get your adequate rest, hydration, get adequate nutrition. So that way you're in a better position to care for those you love and who you work alongside and who you serve alongside with. So that's number one, caring. Number two, communicate. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Talk until you're sick of hearing yourself talk, then talk some more. Text until you're sick of seeing yourself text, then text some more. Email until you're sick of seeing yourself email. Like email until you start rolling your eyes. Oh my gosh, I'm saying another email. That's exactly when you should start doing it even more. Skype, Zoom, do all of it. Do Facebook Lives, all that, all of it. Use every single tool at your disposal to make sure that we are connected even more than we've ever been before. And this brings us to our countdown. Deliberately, strategically leverage every, every piece of that countdown, not just every day, every minute of the countdown. Use the opportunity to re-inject and re-infuse your team with all of the excellence, all of the amazing pieces that you're gonna want them to deliver to their, to, to, to their guests. Now, I want you to think, as we conclude this here today, as a leader, you have a responsibility. You and I both know that not everyone should lead people. It's a special calling. Not everyone, not everybody wants to lead people. There are people who right now have the job title as leader and they don't like to lead people. It's true. And they may not be willing to say it out loud. They may say it to their significant other during pillow talk, but a lot of people don't want to admit that. But if you're in a position where you have the privilege to lead other people and to serve alongside other people, I want you to think about these words because these words that I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna share with you right now, these words are from your team telling you as the leader what they need. 
They're looking you in the eye and they're saying, push me, challenge me, inspire me. Accept nothing less than my absolute best. Don't accept my excuses, my seemingly logical reasons for not doing it right the first time. Tell me that you expect more from me. Tell me that you believe in me and treat me accordingly. Give me opportunities to grow and expect me to succeed. Hold me accountable to your high expectations. Accept nothing less. You are a shaper a molder, a curator of talent. As a result of you, my present and my future are that much brighter. Even when I don't see it, you remind me there's more for me to do, more for me to accomplish. So lift me, lift me higher, insist on excellence, refuse to waver. I believe in you because you believe in me. Lift me higher. Amen. Brian, it's, it's not just a pleasure, it's not just an honor to listen to you, it's a blessing. And thank you for sharing this moment with us, sharing your words, your guidance, um, your energy, your enthusiasm is hopefully more contagious than the fear that the media are spreading. Jim, I wish yeah. you, your family, your friends, your community safe and healthy for the days to come, for the weeks to come, we stay in touch. And thank you so very much from the bottom of my heart. Here's to your good health and encouraging outcomes.